Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 25th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do. We'll start note here, always looking at the last 48 hours of imagery on our sun. As we did report earlier this morning, strong M-class solar flare near X-class solar flare from the northwest region. Not even the sunspot region that I said to watch out for. Another one cresting into view, but is interacting with, as you can see with all this most recent activity and imagery, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Looking at the last two days incoming, this is where you'll see the strong M-class solar flare and as well big plasma filament eruption in the southern hemisphere. Watching it on the right-hand side here, you'll see that plasma filament finally destabilize as we've been watching them all week long. And that did produce a coronal mass ejection. You can see it better here with multi-spectrum pointing out the last 48 hours of events. Right in the bottom there, snap. And then right afterwards had that strong M-class solar flare. We also have a coronal hole that is equatorial and are now Earth-facing. It's not a very big one, but it is a coronal hole. As when that cooled region is Earth-facing, can produce increased solar winds. Having a look here at another light, amazing images. M-class solar flare, northwest region. Eight sunspots to contend with right now. 3805, 3906 did just release another M-class solar flare. Having a look at these sunspot regions in motion, these are the ones that we're going to be watching. This sunspot grouping coming in for an Earth-facing party. Y'all ready? Because towards the end of the month, it's going to get pretty hairy. Current space weather conditions, we are under R2. Moderate radio blackout impacts expected. Degradation of low frequency. Navigation. Solar winds are coming in at 381 kilometers per second right now after being mostly at 420 throughout the day. Flare class, as you can see, going into a frenzy today. Five M-class solar flares, one of them very strong. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity hanging out at a KP2 to 3. Space Weather Prediction Center not involving the most recent coronal mass ejection taken off from our sun this is our most recent solar storm forecast as we've got minor geomagnetic instability over the next couple days. ISWA space prediction spiral here showing the CME. I'm pretty sure this is the CME that took off from the southern limb of our sun. The plasma filament. And that was in a downward fashion, a southward fashion. So not earth directed, kind of looks like it's coming our way, but won't be be scooting underneath our planet mercury retrograde coming up towards the end of the month folks there's that sun diving comet here at lasco 3 <clears throat> pardon me showing the last 48 hours of events most recent coronal mass ejections sun diving comet amazing images here brought to you by soho at lasco NASA and Solar Dynamics Observatory. Here are the most recent coronal mass ejections. One from the plasma filament and another one on the backside eruption. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as we did start the day with a 4.6 magnitude earthquake, Tofino, Canada. That's right, Tofino, Canada reporting a 4.6 off the coast in the Juan de Fuca plate. Minor seismicity through California, no new swarms to talk about. Lots of activity here. Guam and northward into Japan. 4.4 there, Papua New Guinea. And some deep earthquakes to contend with today as well. Lavuka, Fiji, 534 kilometer depth and a 164. Carrying on here around the world, 4.5 there in North China, almost in Russia as well, a 4.4 up into Turkey, 4.4 earthquake there, Chile, 
and as well a 4.6 earthquake here reported in Jordan, Colombia, and the seismicity continues to rumble across Puerto Rico and off the shore and through the Atlantic. Having a look at the last seven days for shakers and movers across the world, all of the red being the oldest, largest earthquake the last seven days was the 5.7 North Greenland Sea. Pretty rare earthquake. We also had the eruption in Iceland. Lots of movement going on with our planet right now. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Stay aware and prepared. Speaking of volcanoes, let's have a look at our air quality forecast brought to you by the active and erupting 70 volcanoes across the world. Big plumes coming out of Hawaii and as well Mexico, Guatemala and Russia. We're looking Africa, increasing sulfur dioxide emissions through Rwanda and as well Indonesia. No new eruptions to speak of, no new volcanoes. Just a whole lot of SO2 enveloping the Northern Hemisphere right now, thanks to the most recent eruption in Iceland. Almost overtaking the Blue Lagoon, close to Grindavik. Devastating situation over there. Let's have a look at world weather here, brought to you by windy.com. Low pressure systems bringing moisture, high pressure bringing dry, and as well a lot of cold air this week. Watch for winter storm developing across eastern Canada, Ontario into Quebec, and then in the long range, 27th to 29th, watch for a nor'easter to impact the Atlantic provinces and multiple systems coming in through northern BC and Alaska. Watch for the snow to pile up in higher elevations. And cold temperatures in the long-range forecast will be sweeping across the nation from west to east. Going to see minus double digits in the long range. Overlooking Europe, you've got multiple systems affecting you this week. In between a high-pressure ridge that will be a cold one. As the polar vortex is setting up and winter is getting ready to set in. Having a look here over Southeast Asia, Australia and Africa... Watch for extreme weather all across the Australian continent. And as well, we've got twin cyclones in the Indian Ocean. One of them in the south dissipates. Long range, the other one showing going straight across the southern tip of India. No new typhoons or cyclones in the long range forecast. Quick look here overlooking the Pacific as we've got a strong system barreling through the North Pacific. Long range forecast. This is the one that will be impacting Alaska in the long range. Stay tuned as we've got a bunch of low pressure systems joining forces there in the Northeast Pacific. Now let's have a look at a temperature forecast. As you can see those deep purples coming down, that's minus 25 and colder. With the wind chills looking at minus 30 to minus 34 as it will be a very windy event in the long range with that huge high-pressure ridge barreling down from the north. Polar vortex is really helping start to fuel all this cold temperatures, all these cold temperatures all across Europe and North America right now. As the north, as the northern hemisphere is, yeah, we're coming into winter. It's a little late but we're getting there. The polar vortex is ready. And there's a whole lot of moisture up there in the north right now and a whole lot of SO2. Having a look at our polar vortex right now showing our upper level winds helps depict where our north pole is or where our magnetic north pole is. Watch for all these Strong, cold winds to sweep across the Northern Hemisphere. Looking at minus double digits towards the end of the month. Mercury retrograde coming up. Active sunspot regions. 
Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due.